Francis Kiarie, umeambiwa na ito muandishi, of course, um, I stand in that position of uh, the secretary to the men department, uh, but other than that, I'm born again, and uh, Jesus Christ is Lord in my savior. Pia ni namke, and when this was announced to me, my wife, uh, yuko wapa karibu, sakuwagi wapa karibu sana, sana juya shuguli za kikazi. I told her, eh, my idea of God to be around. I need to be knowing there is someone in the congregation supporting as I speak. So my wife Kiarie, Mrs. Kiarie, busi mama penye uko wakuone wajue niko na mke mahali. Just stand. Let them. Yes. Yes. Praise God. So I'm married to one wife, and that is a wife. We have three children. We have two sons and one daughter. Eh, nimefika high school lata mimi. So I have two sons in high school and one daughter in class seven. Praise God. 
lakini hiyo sio yenye imenileta hapa kwa hivyo hiyo sitaongeza zaidi si ni kweli so let me talk about what brought me here uh, on 20, on the 16th of october i was in church sometimes you see me sometimes you don't at times uh, because of where my wife is living sometimes i'm here sometimes i'm down there in voi however on the 16th of october i was here and uh, apostle was ministering about hope in the manifesting god hope in the manifesting god and he said many things and i was really amazed even to see how god was working looking at elijah and the miracles that he did on the mountain hallelujah and i could remember the way he was telling the the prophets of baal to keep calling on their god who was asleep probably praise god and uh, of course the message was great and there are many things that i caught in the message however there is one particular thing that he said and i would like to start from there um the way i wrote it down i normally take notes nikikuja kanisani i like taking notes uh, the thing that he said was that the most important thing i can remember even as i turn the pages that the most important thing is to hear from god praise god the most important thing is to hear from god and that caught my attention they talk of a rema word i thought ah the most important thing is to hear from god however he did not stop there he said but for you to hear from him you must listen to him hallelujah for you to hear you must listen to him uh, our chairman brother kamanja told us that the theme for this week as men we say it is the need to hear from god the need to hear from god and when i when i was told that i've got to come and share i was wondering now what do i tell the congregation what do i tell us but then i realized when i make myself available the lord will make me able hallelujah kwamba mimi niko mungu wewe nitumi nitumie kama chombo and therefore i was listening what do i talk about and what came to my mind is a topic i'm going to talk about which is called discerning the voice of the shepherd discerning the voice of the shepherd praise god um i'll base my message on uh, i'll be using the new king james version and therefore awali ambao wanashughulika na mitambo tafadhali mtanielekeza hapo and i'd like us to look at john chapter 10 from verse 1 up to 5 john chapter 10 verse 1 up to 5 and this is what he's saying most assuredly i say to you he who does not enter he who does not enter the shepherd by the door but climbs up the other way that same is a thief and a robber and maybe just to draw you back a bit my, the, the title in my bible is saying the true shepherd the true shepherd hallelujah and therefore verse 2 but he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep continue to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out verse 4 verse 4 now and when he brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice praise god the sheep follow him for they know his voice and verse 5 says uh, verse 5 uh, maybe we can end here yet they will be by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers let us pray mighty and everlasting king we thank you once again this morning the lord you've been so faithful even to allow us to minister as men jehovah and even to have appointed me dear father to be the speaker of the word this morning lord i pray to be used as a voice dear father an instrument of honor that dear lord i'll speak not as a mere man but the very oracles of god that your will be established in our midst that will minister to each of us jehovah as you deem fit father where there's need for edification you'll edify us where there's need for correction you'll correct us where there's need for knowledge jehovah you will grant us the knowledge for you are god and you are good we worship we honor you this we pray believing and trusting in jesus name amen hallelujah so we are talking about the shepherd and when i was thinking about the shepherd maybe just to 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 create a backdrop against which i looked at this shepherd we all understand the shepherd hallelujah we know what a shepherd does kwa kiswahili shepherd ni nani ni mchungaji hallelujah uh, brother Kamanja has told you I'm also a teacher. Nimekuwa nikifunza so mimi maswali nitauliza in the congregation and please let us communicate. Hallelujah. And that makes me feel kama nilikuwa na uoga unai unaisha and therefore uh, shepherd mchungaji. And I reflected on my early life when I was young. That is before I met that lady and much earlier. Nikiwa kijana mdogo, 
I started my class one in DEB Kilgoris. That is part of Narok, Transmara. Praise God. And then after that, for just uh, some mambo to ya jami, we moved from there with my mom and we went to Narok North. Mahali kulikuwa na MP alikuwa naitwa William Ole. Olenti mama for the longest. Hallelujah. And during those days, at least up on Ilikuwa Kijana Mkuba was between class four and class seven, thereabout. Hallelujah. So during those days, what we used to do, we used to look after goats, sheep, and we used to move to different places. I remember we used to come as close as my Mahu here, and we'd be looking for pastures. Uh, most of my early childhood, Sikusoma Sana Mimi, to Lukua Sana Sana Dukoko. Kichakani. And I was liking it. I was loving it. We would feed on meat, drink milk, and enjoy. Praise God. Not much working. And therefore it was enjoyable for me. But I remembered. We used to move again with dogs. We used to not just to be alone. We used to have our call shepherds. And at the same time we used to have some dogs. And I want you to look at that picture. What was the function of the dogs? Why did we need to have dogs? When you're looking at the goat, after the goat, mainly we didn't have cattle. To look na chunga mbuzi. And uh, the work of the dogs was to run, when the goats are trying to run astray, they would go and bite the sheep slightly, maybe on the leg, and the goat will come, come back. Isikule ngano, isiende pandele. Hallelujah. Na waunyesha kazi ya mchungaji. The work, I'm not telling you that mchungaji uh, wetu wanafanya hivo. But in some way, Jesus is a true shepherd. Hallelujah. And will be corrected at some point. Praise God. And therefore, the, the, the dogs will participate in taking care of those goats. But who was in charge? It was not the dogs, but the shepherd. It was ourselves. And we would look at those sheep. And one other amazing thing that I used to look at, we used to have different sheep and goats mingling together. And when the evening time will come, would each person would have to take their goats back to their respective places. Hallelujah. And I used to get very amazed as a young boy. How do my goats identify me? Because when, when you start separating, you know they are mixed. There are so many. They, they could be in their hundreds. But when it comes to time for them to go back home, these goats will not, I will not see my goats having gone with someone else. If I stand there and whistle the way I normally do, they will come to where I am. Praise God. And here you are leading. I had to stand on one direction. And maybe the only time that you would miss one or two is when they do not know where you are standing. Praise God. And therefore they might stray and join another group that is not supposed to be their group and go that way. However, ordinarily, when you stand on this side, then the other person will stand on the other end and another, like that, depending on the number of uh, shepherds that we used to have, then the goats will div be divided into those different groups. Hallelujah. I'm saying there's somewhere I'm going with this and I want us to look at that. And here Jesus is saying in verse 4, and he brings, verse 4, he says, let's get, get back there. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. He goes before them. This one is telling me about position. That he's positioning himself before them, ahead of them. Hallelujah. He's not pushing them from behind. He's standing in front. He goes before them and the sheep follow him. And the sheep follow him. Now he changamoto. It gave me a challenge and I asked myself, then why would they follow? Is only the only reason why you not be able to follow Jesus is when you're not. When you're not a what? A sheep, if you are a goat or something else, if you are another animal, maybe you will not follow him. But if you are a sheep, you will follow him because he's a true shepherd. Hallelujah. And he's saying, for they know his voice. For they know his voice. And when I looked at that, I wondered, now there is knowing his voice. But before I know somebody's voice, I remembered. And I was reflecting on many things. I remembered my dad. Anytime he would come home, he used to live... Uh, at the shopping center and we used to have a home baadai nilitoka narok nikarudi kwa babangu ambaye alikuwa gatundu so when i went to gatundu this man had married three wives my mom included so he had two and so when i came back i came back with my mom you know when i discovered that i don't belong there i went looking for him and i went to gatundu and that's why i started now living with him i got him and i was living with one of the step mothers so uh, later my mother joined us in gatundu and she was taken now to kwa farm, kule kwa shamba. Yule bibi mdogo ndi alikuwa naishi na mzee uko shopping center. So anytime my dad would come, when he speaks, even if you are in the kitchen or you are somewhere, you will know that is your father talking. And what we do is to run out of the kitchen because what are the all, most of the time he would ask, what are you doing with my wife in the kitchen? Hallelujah. 
he was a funny man. He would ask me, what are you doing in the kitchen? Nani wana guruma kitchen na bibi yangu? Oh, and that's your daddy. Hallelujah. And therefore, I knew his voice. Praise God. I knew the voice of my dad. How did I know the voice of my dad? After I came from Narok and I came now to Gatundu, we got a relationship. Praise God. We got acquainted with one another. Hallelujah. So before knowing his voice, I had to know him. Hallelujah. Before knowing his voice, I had to know him. For you to know the voice of Jesus, you've got to be acquainted with him. Praise God. For you to know the voice of Jesus, you've got to know him. Hallelujah. The Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Praise God. That you've got to know Jesus so that you may know him. And uh, so when I looked at this, I was saying, when, when Jesus is standing at the door, saying he goes before them, and this step one is talking about the position. That in every situation, in every circumstance, in every challenge that you're going through as a person in life, Jesus takes lead. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through, he will not tell you, just proceed, I'll follow you up. He goes ahead because he wants to deliver you out of any circumstance, out of any situation. But you must be ready to follow him. He will position himself ahead of you. Praise God. And therefore, we would expect that you would follow him because you know him as a true shepherd. But if you don't know his voice, will you follow him really? You will get astray. Praise God. The step two in that the sheep follow him. There is a choice that you have to make. Even though he's a shepherd in his position ahead of you, you can choose not to follow him. Hallelujah. You can choose for me. I'm going to remain with my challenges and I'm going to show you something as we proceed. And you say, well, the shepherd is here and wants me to go that way, but I won't follow him. And that's why at times, when, uh, you know, when we're taking care of goats and those sheep out, out there, there is no way I could have allowed mine to go with a different shepherd. Hallelujah. Whether it meant beating them up, whether it meant pulling them out of it, I had to make sure that they go with me. Hallelujah. And therefore, there are challenges that we may go through as people, as Christians, because we are failing to listen to the voice of the true shepherd. And therefore, he may use whatever he may want to use, so that he puts you back on, on course. Hallelujah. He would use anything. Because for God, he says he wants to do the best for us. Hallelujah. His plans for us are not evil, but good. To give us a hope and a future. And to bring us to that expected end. There is an expected end for each one of you. There is an expected end for me. There is an expected end for you. And Jesus wants to bring you there. However, you may choose. And then Jesus will use his own ways to make sure that you, are, you follow him. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, for you to, to hear, as the apostle told us the other day, for you to hear from God, you must be ready to, to listen. In Isaiah, maybe let me turn there, in Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4 to 5, Isaiah chapter 50, Isaiah chapter 50 says, The Lord has given me, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He, he awakens my ear. He awakens my ear to hear as a learned. Hallelujah. He awake, awakens. Every other morning he is awakening you to hear. Praise God. He is awakening you to hear as a learned. Why does he want you to be learned? What is this learning that he's talking about? I told you my teacher I'll ask you questions. Why? He's talking I need to hear as a learned. He could just, just stop there and say you need to hear. Just hear. But he said, you don't just hear, you hear as a, as a learned. And I looked at Jesus as I was studying these verses. And I realized that Jesus has been connotated in different ways in the Bible. He has got different sets that he's gotten. And when I looked at uh, 1 John chapter 5, and uh, 1 John chapter 5, I want to believe it is, and verse 7. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. It says, For this, for there are three that bear witness in heaven. There are how many? Three. And one of them, the Father, the second one, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. As you acquaint yourself with Him, you will know Him as a word and you can see that word is written in capital letter talking about the word this word is jesus hallelujah in the beginning there was the word and the word was god and the word was with god hallelujah and before him nothing was that that is hallelujah and therefore the word the word 
and I narrowed down to that. I noticed that there he's been depicted as the word of God. Hallelujah. The other thing I notice is that Jesus, let's read um, 1 Corinthians chapter, 3, chapter 1 and verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. Thank you very fast. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. What did he become? Wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And I picked, he became wisdom. Hallelujah. Jesus became wisdom. So we've known him as a shepherd. We've also known him as the word and we've known him as wisdom. And I went down now to Proverbs chapter chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. I'm moving a bit fast, but uh, I know I will uh, get you somewhere. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Let's start from verse 20. It says that wisdom calls aloud outside. Wisdom calls aloud outside. It says some versions will talk of wisdom cries in the streets. Hallelujah. Wisdom cries. I know there are some versions which are reading that. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. Praise God. Who is this talking? We've been told Jesus is wisdom, isn't it? And now again here we are told that wisdom is calling out in the streets. It's calling aloud. And when I look at it, I realize that today the word of God is spoken in crusades. Hallelujah. The word of God is spoken on TVs. Praise God. On the radio, on, 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 when you're moving along the way, on the vehicles, the wisdom is still speaking. Praise God. The word of God is still being spoken. And therefore, Jesus is a word. Jesus is wisdom. He is a true shepherd. For us to know his voice, we've got to understand him. We've got to understand who is this that is speaking to us. When the apostle said that uh, the most important thing is to hear from God, Therefore, you can hear from God through his word. You can hear the wisdom of God. Praise God. I hope I've not lost anybody so far. Hallelujah. So God has designed Jesus to be the true shepherd. And this true shepherd is a word. He is a wisdom. He was made to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. Praise God. So Jesus is a wisdom. We are not looking at the wisdom of men here. We are looking at the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. And I looked at... Uh, at the Bible again in um, in First Samuel chapter three, I would like us to look uh, to turn there. First Samuel chapter three. Yes, we will start reading verse one. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. There was no widespread revelation verse 2 and it came to pass that the time when Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see continue and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and, El and, and while Samuel was lying down continue that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here I am he called and Samuel answered, here I am. Continue to the next verse. So he ran to, to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Continue. Then the Lord called yet again. Who called? Then the Lord called yet again. Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I didn't call you, my son. Lie down again. Continue. Now Samuel did not yet know. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Praise Jesus. Samuel did not know who was calling. Why didn't he know? Because Jesus, this Lord was not yet revealed to him. It says, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. I do not know who is standing in that position. That probably your answer is just a foothold away. Hallelujah. But Jesus has not yet been revealed to you. You've not known him. You know of Job he said that I had known about him but now I've seen him with my own 
eyes, he has gotten a contact, a new level of experience with Jesus. That he has now known him. He did just see about him, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. But now he has got a revelation with his Jesus, with his God. Hallelujah. At that time, Jesus maybe had not really come as Jesus, the Son of God. But the word of God was still there and God was still there. So Job was saying that I was only hearing about him. How many of us here only hear about him? Praise God. That we are talking about the, the God of the apostle. I know when the apostle prays for me, I'll be healed. I know I'll get success when I'm prayed for by so and so. What about you? How do you know that God? Hallelujah. What revelation do you know of him? Have you known him as God who heals? Have you known him as God who saves? Have you known him as God who provides? Hallelujah. Praise God. There are many connotations. He would want to speak. He would want to speak into a situation. Because he said, I am. He said his name is? I am. Meaning that he was ready to supply all that we need. However, we must have a revelation of what we need. That this that I need is only going to come out of him. Praise God. Let's continue in that first Samuel. Well, let's continue. Uh, it's Psalm uh, verse uh, 9. Um, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time. How many the third time? So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived. Oh. Then Eli perceived. Did not, didn't just see. There is a difference between perception and looking. Just seeing. You can look and not perceive. Hallelujah. You can look and not perceive. You can talk and not communicate. Hallelujah. There are different levels. Here he is seeing, but he's not he had not perceived, he had not perceived that the Lord had called the boy. This is a young boy. And verse uh, 9, Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be. Go lie down, and it shall be. If he calls you, you must say. Here, this is an obligation. He is not given an option. He is told that when he calls, if he calls, you must. Must to me is an obligation. Is a must. There are no chances. You don't have to meander. You don't have to say this or that. It's, God. it's very clear that when he calls you, you must. You must say. You must say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Two levels here. This young man, young boy, is being instructed that of course God will speak. Of course God will speak. But you must stand in your position. When I was looking at this sharing, I was understanding. There must be a position that you've taken. Hallelujah. He had to take a position and say that I am hearing as well. As you speak, I'll be ready to hear. The voice of the Lord is crying in the streets. Even here, it's part of maybe it's crying in the streets. It could be here elsewhere. But how many are daring to hear? Hallelujah. We need to hear from God. There's need to hear from God. We need to discern the voice of the true shepherd. Hallelujah. And here he's saying, um, um, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And let me take you back a bit. When you're talking about Samuel here, where was Samuel? Where was Samuel lying? In the ark? Or the, it was in the tabernacle, isn't it? And he's saying where, that's where, I, I will take it to be where, in like a church like this. Hallelujah. That probably at that time when Eli was ministering, he was dwelling within the church. Wachungaji wa wakatula ulikuwa naishi wapi? Kanisani, isn't it? So he was dwelling there. And this boy, remember when he was born, he was taken to the church. Praise God. And therefore, he had taken a position where the word can be available. You want to hear, you want to have the revelation, but you are so far. Hallelujah. What position have you taken? Eli, um, this young boy was lying together with Eli because Eli was the one who was endowed with the word. He could speak to him. But you see, even him, he had grown old and his eyes had started dimming. He was now beginning not to hear God very well. Hallelujah. So and I noticed that the eyes and the ears have got to go together in some way. Hallelujah. That he could not hear. And he told the boy to go and lie down. Now there's a difference between lying down and sleep. Most of us would want to be told, go and sleep. How do you hear God when you're asleep? Hallelujah. You've got to be alert in the spirit. No wonder the Bible says in Isaiah, he awakens my ear to hear as a learned. He will have to awaken you so that you can hear. How do you hear when you're in spiritual slumber? Praise God. You need to be alert in the spirit so that you can hear. And the boy, so Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10. 
Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. He came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Now I notice here he's calling twice. He has called the name of Samuel twice. Samuel, Samuel. Because more, more often than not, when God is speaking to us, you think that message directed to that other person. Hallelujah. But he's talking to you. He calls me, carry, carry. So that I do not mistake. It is me he's referring to. He calls you singularly. He's talking about you. He's seated in that seat that you're sitting. Praise God. So when he addresses you, he's not addressing you uh, in an amorphous way, the way that, that it's not very clear. It's so clear with him. Praise God. And he says, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. The Lord would want to speak, but then are we ready to hear? Are we ready to listen? We want to perceive his voice. He wants to speak. And you see, he stood like he did at other times. And now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Therefore, the visitation could have been several. He has come before. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. However, what he's doing today is so different from what he's doing for you today may be different from what he did yesterday for you. Hallelujah. You may be just be looking at him because he healed me yesterday. The only way he can come to me is through healing. He may want to come and speak something different today, but he's still the same, the same God, because the needs differ every other day. When he comes to minister to you for the need of today, he will come with a message for today. Hallelujah. And therefore he came and stood as he stood other times. And Samuel was not hearing him because he was not yet revealed to him. But this time he knew this is not ordinary man talking. This is not Eli calling me. He has been told he's not Eli, but God who is called calling. And he said, Speak for your servant hears. Let's see verse 11. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'll do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears will tingle my my message largely was on that point that he was not told to go and sleep we need to be alert in the spirit so that we can hear the voice of god we need to you know he says draw near to me and i'll draw near nigh to you don't go and just sleep and expect him to come uh, he will he will speak but how does he speak we want to look at how do we discern the voice of the shepherd remember he's a shepherd but we need to position ourselves. And let me show you about the positioning again in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. I'll look at that and then... Uh, yes, now it have verse 38, yes. Uh, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village... And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Then verse 39, and she said, and she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at the feet, at Jesus' feet, and heard his word. Let me read that again. Let's repeat that the verse that verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, who, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. This true shepherd is still speaking. But for you to hear, where need, do you need to be positioned? At the feet of Jesus. Why are the feet? I was asking myself, why are the feet? There is a connotation of humility that is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Because you're not going to tell him. Most of the time we like telling him, be it in prayer or whatever it is. We want to tell him, but not really to, to hear. He may tell you, just hold on. I know you prayed and you've supplicated. You've done all that is need, needed for you to do. But I want to speak and tell you what you need to do. The position of humility will cause you to obey. It is one thing to hear, it's another thing to obey. If you're just a hearer of the word and do not, you're not ready to obey, that's not the position that Jesus wants you to take. We talked about, we've talked about a position, and here he say, she sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. When the word was spoken, he was ready to hear. And I thank God you are ready here. You are today in this congregation to hear the word of God so that we can hear how is the shepherd speaking. Let's continue. But mother was distracted with much serving. With what? With much serving. And remember when she was serving Jesus. And approached him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Continue. And Jesus, and said, and Jesus answered and said to her. Again, we are seeing Jesus here calling twice. Martha, 
Martha, he's talking about you. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Oh, hallelujah. You are worried and troubled about many things. Umebebana na mehango, as our apostle tells us. Very many things. You are not just, and Jesus here is talking of Martha, directing that instruction to Martha and telling Martha. It's not just about the worry. Not just about the worry. There are levels. This is another level. This lady called Martha. Martha, Martha, you are worried. How many here are worried? That there are many things that are scaring us. I said I've got two sons in high school. And uh, school fees has not been very easy for us. Praise God. Yes, kila wakati ukisikia mtoto ukisikia kasimu kutoka shule you are thinking against school fees, school fees. We may tend to get very worried. Praise God. But we need to stand still. We need to know our position because God gave us those children so that we can go be stewards of the same children. Hallelujah. And I tell them you'll have to school ata ikifika pesa ngapi tutali? Talipa, you'll be there. They are both the, those two sons are both in national schools and therefore I know sometimes in a, in a garimu kiasi. Praise God. But I'm telling them you'll have to do your part. I'm a parent. I'll also have to do my part together with your mom. Hallelujah. So it, we can be troubled. But here Jesus is saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried. You are worried. I know even in this congregation there could be people up there, down here, who are worried. Who are worried. There are many things that can cause us worry. The flour, the cooking flour and oil and all this are increasing. Yesterday I went to buy bread. Na nikiwa katika hali ya kuangalia hizo mikate, nikaona mkate moja is costing 209. In fact I told my wife, Allah, kwani kuna mkate ya 200. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> 209 bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we must survive. It's one quick mat. Kienda quick mat utaiona, hiyo quick mat ya bypass and I believe all of them are costing the same elsewhere. But then I'm told it's 1 and a half kg. 209. Wouldn't you be worried? When my boys come home, that's a bread they want to take every other morning. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They want to eat the 209 when I send them for bread. Ukiwapatia pesa kama ni miatano watachukua iyo. And tomorrow they need another one. And another. Oh, don't I have a reason to be worried? These ones are eating too much and have to pay school fees. Praise God. Now on a cooler, they really eat. <laughs> But is there time to enjoy? Praise God. So if you are there, do not be worried. You are called to be a steward of those children. Hallelujah. Wewe fanya kazi yako ya kuwale? Know Jesus as a shepherd, as the one that provides. Jehovah Jireh. Praise God. Ukisha ajua ye ndia na peana. So you will tell him, please give me. Uh, I normally remember, I didn't mean to talk about this, but let me, let me just mention that. Because I like relating to life, real life experiences. Hallelujah. Sometime back, when I married that lady who is seated there, Teresa Carey, um, I noticed she was a bit worried. Not um, about many things. But one of the things that were worrying her, we normally hold uh, family meetings during the holidays in her family, that is. Oh, well, kila wakati, mara tunaenda kwa huyu, kwa huyu mwingine. Na tunachinja na tunatafuna. Praise God. And uh, the worry was, we were living in Toll Station, Pale, Pale Toll. And the house was small. And every time she would ask me, wakati tafika za muyetu, na juu kingia kwa hii familia, people, you'll have to host all these people. And they are 10 in number in their family. And she was telling me, be ready to host them. And you see, I could not afford to, to hire a house that is big. It was a double room. Kuna bedroom na ingine. Yo ndio sitting. You see, yo mambo imekusha. Hallelujah. And therefore, I was also worried. Praise God. So I'm not coming here to tell you I've never been worried. I was also very worried. And so she's talking here and telling me, Kwanza, tu, umtoto wakipatikana, pia pia watakuja. Eh, all these people will come. <laughs> and uh, before I knew it, pop, Kerry is around. And he came. Now my, that's the firstborn. And those people indeed did come. So when they came, pile at all, I always remember. So they came and I'm seeing, watu, garizi mepakua uko inje, watu ni wengi, eh, and they come with their kids. Now these ones, <laughs> what do you do in my position? It's a small room, but I have got one of my brother-in-laws, a good friend of mine. And I told him, hey, bro, hapa mimi, naona kuendi vizuri. And he arrived a bit early, and he could understand me. He identified with me. Can you by the way, do you have a bed? <laughs> Say, Allah, bed? Who doesn't have a bed? <laughs> in this house, there is a bed. He noticed I was so worried about where people will sit. Kasema, your bed tutoe na huko ndani tulete? 
Wapi? Na msichana wa kazi analala wapi? Kaambia she has a bed. So tutoe hiyo pia. Do you have water cans? Yes. Mtungi? Yes. Bring them out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we brought out those many things to collect hapa kwa sitting sasa. And he told me anybody who is not ready to sit in these ones, wacha rudi kwa kwake, kwake kuna viti vizuri. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so from that time of course my wife was very disturbed you know ladies Mimi I was uh, Mimi I, we trivialize that with the brother in law but for her she was really worried worried about many things about sasa watasema nini watatubeba aje and all those things na mimi ziko na shughuli na hiyo but my message is when uh, that happened I told her I will buy you a plot I have noticed that you are very worried and I'll buy you a plot of your choice kutoka ngoikwa mpaka gidhurai mahali utachagua I'll buy I'll buy you. Hey, kujichocha nayo. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, we kept on shopping, window shopping. We went to Nguikwa. She says, no, not here. So we come, uh, we were living in Toll. I asked her, what about Toll? Don't you think that this place, that was around 209. Don't you think the place is good? And she would look around and tell me, well, are you sure you can afford 300? Yet, unajua ataki kuniambia, unashindwa kubai kiti. Sasa, 300. Hallelujah. <laughs> she, she had a good sense of humor. But I told her, believe in this God. So I, I, I took her to different places. Let me cut the long story short. We moved from different places to Mekuja to Mefika Kihunguro. Eh, bado ujapata plot uku kuote, upendi uku kuote. So we come to Kihunguro, she says, uh, not yet. Hey, you know, I did not mean, I didn't want her to go this way so much. I wanted her to go where it would be slightly cheaper. Hallelujah. But we, she went and... Um, she sold at a place called Vazityville. And she told me, this is what I want. Eh? And so I asked her around, what's the cost of the plots here? And I was told back then, in round 209, I was told 380. Sasa, unasumbuliwa na 300, uyu mtu naya nakuja kuchagwe ya 380. And she went, we, it, we were unlucky. I was unlucky that day. Because we actually saw a broker who took us to a plot. And she said, this one is on offer, this one. And my wife, do you know what she did? Said, iyo ndiyo nataka, iyo, 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 that. <laughs> that very one is the one I want. But he had promised. And I told my wife, I'll buy you a plot from? We are called to be imitators of who? Of Christ, isn't it? From where, where the source of your feet shall touch, I'll give you. And I decided, let me also imitate Christ and say, ni muambia evil. And so she chose that particular plot. And we bargained a bit, and then we went home. And Kamambia watch and it's number. Give me even the plot, the, 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 the contact of the owner. Kamambia interlipa. My idea interlipa. And I had only 10K, by the way. <laughs> With only 10,000 shillings. So my wife, we went back to Toll. By the way, I took what to afford that Akukuja e charge. Well, let me say that as a testimony as well. We could not afford even fair Akukuja Kila Wakati Kuja Nakurudi. So we had to walk one way. Or the other, and I was telling her, that's really romantic. <laughs> <And> we, <laughs> so we could walk one way. Either we come because we want to give, maybe ni 20 shillings, kama ni 50, 20 ni akupea na ye, kumi na mimi kumi. I love to narudi evil. So we could either come walking or go back walking. So we went to Apple Bypass, and uh, she had identified a plot, and uh, she says, in your, uh, this one, I like it. So I took her the following day after I left work. I was working at Kenyatta Road at that time. And I told her, I want us to go back to where we saw the plot, so that I start, I initialize the payment process. And she came with me excited, thinking, this guy, unajua naume na kuficha pesa. pesa. So we went to that plot, and I told her, stand on the plot. So she stood, sayo kuna watu, that place, there were not many people living there. And so she stood there, and I told her to stand, and I want to say a prayer. And I said, God, you know I promised this lady that I'll give her a plot, based on your word. You said, where the soul of my feet shall touch, I'll give you. And here is where are my soul of my feet are touching. And based on your word, I promise this lady, give me the plot. Hallelujah. Amen. And today we own a plot, the very place that she said. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God is a miracle worker. How you in Gino Acha now, Vile Kulienda? We also have a home there. But Vile Kulienda, you see, yeah? But she's here. I'm saying that she's in this congregation. I had no money. I didn't know how that can be done. But God, in His own divine wisdom, made it possible for me what i told her well, the only thing i remember telling god is that if this is the real, really the very best plot for her give her this one but if this is not the best she has chosen this place take her to the very best 
place. So we didn't dwell on that plot. We bought a bigger one, just a few meters away from there. Hallelujah. At a bigger price than that because we didn't buy that here. But we bought later, close to a million later. So how we could not afford 380 and now one year later we are affording 750. Siwa ni mungu. Si ni mungu uyo. That is the God we are talking about. But how can you hear him if you do not know him? Praise God. You need to position yourself to hear from him. I had heard about him. I had heard him that he can give. And I had that revelation. That once he says he'll do, he will do. Praise God. And I chose to believe him. I chose to trust him. Praise Jesus. Um, so Martha is troubled, is worried. And Jesus does not stop there. She tells her you are worried and troubled. You are worried and troubled about many things. So you are worry. Like you know, get a worry together with trouble. That you are worried and troubled. And not just about one thing. You know, one thing can disturb you. But you are worried. You are worried and troubled about many things. I know many people can identify with that. Sasa yorunga imekua beigali. Sasa school fees. And many, many things. I came to tell you today. Listen to the shepherd. He has got the answer to all those challenges. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is ready to minister. My wife tells me, the funny thing about it is that you don't get scared. Na muambia, Mimi, I've done enough panicking in life. I don't panic anymore. Praise God. She knows that. And I'll tell her, there, there are many things. I'm not going to talk about that today, maybe another day. But there are things that we've experienced that she was expecting me to worry, including people breaking into your house, burglars. And they are thinking, ah, this guy will be very worried. But I talked to them, and they broke in all the same. That's a story for another day. But they didn't beat us. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was able to instruct them not to beat any of us, and they never did. Hallelujah. Because God is with us. God is with us. You need to position yourself. But then, let's read the next verse and look chapter... Yes, you are worried. Uh, no, the, the 41. It's talking of you are worried and troubled about many things. And then 42. But one thing is needed. But one? One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Which will not be taken away from her. Praise God. It is a choice. One thing is needed. One thing is, even today the message that I'm bringing to you is that one thing is needed. Not so those many things. One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Which will not be taken away from her. Praise Jesus. Once you've taken the good part, it will not be taken away from you. Hallelujah. We are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is, needed after that statement of being told about worry and trouble you are told but one thing is needed when you are given the solution why not choose the solution hallelujah he said one thing is needed and mary has chosen has made a choice has chosen the good part which will not be taken away from her what did she do she sat at the feet of jesus and heard the word she was listening to the shepherd and that's all you need that's what you need my sister that's what you need my brother <coughs> As I draw to a close, I'd like us to look at uh, Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 14, sorry, and from verse 22. <coughs> this is talking about Jesus also walking on the water, and I wanted to, to draw a certain illustration so that I may draw to a close. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22 is saying, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. Verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Continue. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Let's just look at that. It is talking about, it is at what hour of the night? <clears throat> at the fourth hour of the night. Ordinarily what happens when it's at the fourth hour of the night? I was looking at it and I was imagining, this is 10, 10 p.m., isn't it? Maybe around that time, because the first hour of the night could be maybe 7, isn't it? Then we go to 8, 9, and 10. At 10, what happens? And I remembered when we were young again, I have three sisters myself, and uh, during the day, uh, ordinarily in upcountry, the toilets are built up Mbali Kidogo, Sindio. So during the day, would those sisters get scared to go to the washroom, to, get to go to the toilets? Nobody would be scared, isn't it? 
During the day you can go alone, but when the night came, hey, ebuni peleke cho, you want to be taken? Because it's caring, hallelujah. It is caring at night. So this is the fourth hour of the night, and therefore it was caring for them. And where were they? They were in the middle of the sea. I want you to see the picture. They are not just in the middle of the sea and the sea is calm. It says the wind was contrary. Therefore the boat was being tossed back and forth. You don't want to imagine what can happen. Have you gone to Mombasa? Have you gone to the Lake Nakuru or Lake, Lake Victoria? And you look at that expansive mass of water and you imagine yourself in the middle and then things are going haywire. What is the first imagination? No wonder at some point they were saying, they were, the disciples were asking Jesus, don't you care that we die? Don't you care that we die? Because ordinarily when that happens, when the wind is blowing back, left, right and center, you can die in the middle of the ocean. But it was just in the middle of the ocean. It was dark. Hallelujah. It was the fourth hour of the night and it's dark and the wind was contrary. Let's continue. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea. It was, by, okay, continue verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Again, look at trouble. Saying, it is a ghost. When help is coming to us, the first impression that we get, probably is not some good help. Hallelujah. They are thinking, this is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. When you have that kind of position, ordinarily what you would get is fear. You get fear. You're imagining, what if I die? What if I die? Verse 27. <clears throat> but immediately Jesus spoke. I love the way Jesus responds quickly. The Bible records here, but immediately. But in your circumstance, in your situation, Jesus will respond immediately. He doesn't wait. He knows that you are troubled about many things. But we want to call you by name and tell you, but immediately... Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. How comforting that is, that even though we are tossed back and forth, Jesus is within reach, and here he comes. Look at what Peter says next. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. They needed clarity. He needed to be clear. It could be a ghost. It could be somebody imitating Jesus. Hallelujah. And then you tell me to come to you on the water, I'll just sink. Hallelujah. But he knew if this is Jesus, the Son of God, the one that raises people from the dead, he can command me to walk on the water that he's walking on and to get to where he is. Hallelujah. Therefore, he had to know Jesus. I want you to speak because he knew the voice of Jesus. Even in darkness, well, it's still dark. Even if I speak in my home, my children know my voice. Whether it will be in darkness and I'm calling from a, a far, maybe within, of course, within the sound of my voice. If they hear me, they'll know that is daddy speaking. Hallelujah. If I call them by their name, if I call one of my sons or the daughter, they'll know it's me calling. Hallelujah. Because we have acquainted ourselves with each other. They have known me and I have known them. We have interacted over time. And therefore they are aware. This is how daddy speaks. Hallelujah. And therefore, if that is you, dad, call me out. You know, if thugs came to your place, and maybe dad is in the midst of them. So you ask, if that is you, let me come. You hear him call. Hallelujah. You would want to hear his voice, and you would want maybe to come out and help, or you would be comforted to move forward, because you know that is your dad. And he said, Peter answered and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. That even through, though there is a challenge here, this water is a challenge. But if that is you, bid me to come and I'll come to you. He knew Jesus is able to cause him to walk on the, on the water. What am I talking about here? You need a revelation of who this Jesus is so that you can hear his voice. It's not one thing to know his voice, another thing to know him. Hallelujah. You will need to know him so that his voice will be acquainted to you. Hallelujah. And <coughs> while I was looking at this, I noticed <coughs> That Martha, who was the mother of Jesus, knew this son of his. And I remember the first miracle that he did. I know we are all aware of that, isn't it? <clears throat> What's the first miracle that Jesus did? He changed water into wine. I'm not going to turn there, but maybe you can look at that at a later moment. <clears throat> it's, it's found in, uh, in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. But I want to underscore one point that is spoke there. Having known Jesus... 
he knew that this son is not ordinary, just an ordinary boy. This is a son that is able to deliver. This is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Even though I'm the mother, this one is beyond just an ordinary son. Hallelujah. And he told them, <coughs> she told them, she told them. Of course, Jesus, there are many things that Jesus said there. But one of the things that Mary told the people who are in that feast, whatever he tells to you to do, do it. Whatever he says, do it. His mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, whatever the word of God is telling you to do it. The solution is lying in obedience. Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever. When I talk of whatever, it means everything. Anything that he says, whatever the word says, confine yourself to that. Hallelujah. Whatever he says to you, do it. Many of us would want to hear, and we hear, but are we ready to obey? The solution will be within reach. He is a miracle. The first miracle he did, that's a prophecy that was given by the mother who knew Jesus very well. Therefore, they had to hear, and not just hear him, but be ready to obey. And he says, whatever he says to you to do, whatever he says to you, do it. The solution is lying in obedience. The solution is lying in us listening. Hallelujah. And I looked at it and I said there should also be a proximity. For you to hear Jesus clearly, you need to be close to him, as close as sitting at the feet of Jesus. No wonder when the disciples are seeing him walking on the water, he's at a far off. Hallelujah. But as draws near, that's when they have the audacity and the courage to call on him and tell him, that is, that is you. You will not hear somebody talking from the stage, rural stage, and know him or her, would you? It's even difficult for you to hear their voice, isn't it? If they shouted at that stadium, you may not know them. You may not hear well. But if they are within reach, where I can see them, and the voice can reach me. So I can tell, that's Gloria speaking. That is uh, Maluti talking. Hallelujah. But if she, he's very far there, I may not know. If they are at the Sunday school classes, I may not know. Therefore, we are called to draw near to him. That we can position ourselves rightly, and we'll be able to, be able to hear him will be able to hear his voice. But many a times there are things that normally happen to us. We hear very many voices. And I'll close with these scriptures uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 and from verse 11 as I draw to a close. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 13. We are talking about discerning the voice of the shepherd. An apostle told us the most important thing, the most, the principal thing is to hear from God. But we cannot hear him unless we listen to him. Remember he was talking about hope in the manifesting God. We want God to manifest his power in our lives. But then how will he manifest his power when you're not listening to him? How will he manifest his power when you're not obeying him? Hallelujah. He wants us to obey. And God has got every intention to bless us. Let's read this as I do to a close. Then he said, get out and stand at the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke into the rocks uh, in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Continue the next verse. And after the earthquake, a fire. And after the earthquake, a fire. This is like a baptism of fire. You are moving from one level of challenges to the next one probably in the, in the context that I'm talking about here. In your situation, you want God to show up when you're going through that fire. When there's something loud speaking to you. Have you ever heard that somebody's dead and they are coming for you? Maybe it's a bank. Hallelujah. It's like an earthquake. Praise God. It could be school fees. That is a daunting amount, uh, a humongous sum of money. They want you to pay all that money, but you don't have it. Doesn't, does it when you get that letter, does it sound like an earthquake? Praise God. When it's so scary that you are supposed to, to, to do one or two things and then you are not able to do that, it sounds like an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. After the fire, a still small voice. He's a God that answers by fire. The apostle told us that when the prophets of Baal were calling, they were calling for fire to come from heaven and, and take the sacrifice. Hallelujah. He answered by fire. But after that fire, that's where the voice came in. There must be a manifestation. God is going to speak to us, but he's not going to shout. Even on his calling, Martha, Martha, he may not necessarily shout. 
And I was imagining myself, and I looked at Jesus, and I noticed. Jesus never ran. It's not recorded in the Bible that he ran. He was running to attend to a certain function. Hallelujah. He knew how to organize himself. And he took it steadily because he knew who he was. Hallelujah. He knew, he was, he knew about his mission, and he was ready to accomplish the mission cleanly and clearly. Hallelujah. There's a still small voice that is going to speak to us. That voice could be the voice that Jesus has decided to speak to you today. It could be the voice that spoke yesterday. Hallelujah. But are you ready to hear? Are you ready to obey? Praise God. We need to discern the voice of the shepherd. But for us to know his voice, we've got to know him. For us to know his voice, we've got to know? To know him. And then we position ourselves with close proximity. Because even if we know him but we are very far, we may not hear him clearly. Hallelujah. Let us sit at the feet of Jesus. It's a position of humility. It's a position of humility. That we are there, ready to be taught. And I'm glad that people are settled in church today. They want to hear Jesus. Hallelujah. I know it's not about me. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. And when you are ready to hear, God is going to manifest his glory in this place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we rise up to our feet as we draw to a close. Asante Nisan.